Alright everybody, hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for joining me today uh, on this video. My name is Jesse and I'm the host here on this channel. I usually upload videos every week here about various topics surrounding uh, Norse or Germanic heathenry, paganism, whichever term you want to put it to. Um, some Norse mythology things, things that have to do with the uh, Germanic people of the uh, or ancient Germanic peoples believe pre-Christian times and um, a lot of it has to do with my own personal view on things taken from some of the historical side um, but some other things um, are, are, are pretty well focused on historical findings um, I myself am not one of those hardcore recon heathens uh, but I do like to pull from the from the old to build into the new to help develop my view of the world in modern times as a heathen here and today so Full disclosure and big disclaimer, some of what you're going to get from me is this, what is called UPG, Unverified Personal Gnosis. Um, take that as you will. Um, but if you like what I do and if you like this topic of discussion, things about, about this subject matter, uh, please go ahead right down here and click the subscribe button. And uh, then if you don't want to miss anything, you click the bell notifications and you'll get that notification every time that I upload new content. Uh, so today's video is going to be sort of a one of at least four part mini-series that I'm going to be running concurrent uh, every week hereafter until it's completed um, on the subject of the uh, parts of self. Okay, we're going to be examining the self or the self complex, the soul complex if you will, as seen and perceived by our Norse ancestors. Okay, the way they viewed the parts of self um, beyond just what most people in, in a lot of Western cultures see as, you know, mind, body, and spirit. Um, there, there's more to the soul complex, there's more to the self as seen by, uh, the Norse people, at least back then. So, I'm going to be talking, uh, today about one specific part of the self, and then in each video hereafter, I'm going to be touching upon the other parts. Okay, so this subject or this uh, series if you will um, came on or is coming off of the the, uh, the coattails of my last video about how you know I don't think that we in modern times have the option or the ability or the uh, you know we're not going to Valhalla when we die um, this whole idea of what happens to our bodies or ourselves rather um, when we die is a very complex thing and the reason that this series is going on now is uh, a lot of positive feedback came from everybody that watches these videos, not only here on the YouTube channel, um, but also um, on the Facebook page. So for everybody who provided the feedback, voted, um, offered their insight, and uh, wants to see this happen, this is all uh, thanks to you, so I appreciate that. Um, so today's video is going to be on one of the parts of self um, called the Homer. Okay, Homer sounds like hammer, looks like hammer. Um, I'm using an old Norse pronunciation of the word, so Homer, and um, the Homer is the part of the self uh, that is, uh, the word itself actually means uh, like shape or skin, okay, and it is the physical form or the physical representation, um, there's more to it than that, but at least it's, it's, it's what we see, when you look at somebody, when, when people look at me, what they see at least but what they perceive, okay, is my Homer. And um, the Homer is what, is, it's kind of like it carries our, it, it's what is carried about with our physical selves, okay? So when our physical self dies, when this body, then this physical shell dies, um, the Homer uh, dies with it, but it also, there, there, there's parts of the Homer that exist beyond physical death. Um, because it, it is part of the spiritual, it is part of the self, and therefore it exists beyond that, that physical limitation of, of life, okay? Um, so, uh, one of the big things that we read about in the lore is uh, something that the Norse viewed as, as very um, powerful or very important was the, uh, the ability to uh, shape-shift, or the ability to change their one's appearance uh, even to the extent of an animal form. We, we read about, um, I think it's in Snorri Sturluson's Prose Edda, one of the poems in the Prose Edda, that um, Odin can uh, or, or would travel outside of his physical appearance, his physical self. He would be 
laying down as though he appeared to be sleeping, and he was able to travel the realms, travel about in animal form, um, and that was his Hummer that was, that was traveling. It was his, that part of his self um, that was able to go about when his seemingly physical self uh, was dormant or asleep or whatever. Um, and it, it was such an important thing to think about uh, for the Norse people at the time that um, people who, you know, so it, it was deemed as, as, as very, a very powerful thing for, for magical purposes, for the save, uh, for the save workers. Um, and uh, it, 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 if, if you were able to do this easily, if you had good, strong homer, your homer is what it was called. And um, so this is a part of the self that exists not just in what we see, because not all the things that we see or not or what we perceive aren't always what they truly are. And well, one of the things to uh, remember that, in, unlike in modern times, you know, the the, the, the perception of this word is, is is not that, or the perception of the Homer, uh, it's not ultimately a static thing, right? Like, I'm not just me myself, the way you see me at all times. My shape can change, my my, my appearance can change, my Homer can change, uh, at least from the worldview of the of, of our ancient heathen ancestors, right? So, um, this I believe is is a very critical uh, and important part. Not that not that the rest of the parts of self aren't important or don't have a level of importance uh, but this is something that is extremely important because it is who we are you know um, there's parts of self that we'll be getting into later on in this series and other videos um, things that are uh, sort of tied to us that aren't necessarily us as, a, as, as, as so much us as an individual but that are just kind of with us follow us go with us um, things that we kind of get along the way or, or get from our ancestors and um, the Hummer is us you know and I think that that is probably one of the most important things to think about in terms of like I said from going back off of the last video that we did about um, you know why we don't why I wouldn't go to Valhalla is because the concept or the idea of one part of us going to one specific destination one specific location when we die uh, doesn't fit into the worldview of our ancient ancestors because they had so many parts of their self that they, you know, believed in and, and existed, or believed in that existed. It's not like okay, when Jesse dies, he, you know, whatever happens to him goes. He goes to one place or the other. There's there's parts of me that are going to probably end up in a lot of different places. Um, the Homer um, can 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 stick around or or, or, or in in what's called the mound. Um, but at least if I'm thinking of this correctly, it's, it's the part of the self that kind of goes back to uh, your ancestors, that goes back to where your ancestors are resting eternally um, in what we know of in the lore as Helheim, right? Hell's Hall, um, where everyone goes, where, the, where, where our ancestors go, where we meet up with and enjoy just a relaxing, uh, peaceful existence of eternity sort of thing. Um, some similar to, as I've heard it described, very similar to Midgard, but without all the aggravation and not without all the, you know, stresses and things like that. So, um, I think that the Homer is uh, the part of ourself that can that is beyond just what we physically look at and see. Um, it, it 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 can change, it can alter. Uh, parts of, of self can can be, sh you know, shape shifted. Um, we can be a different person over time, we can be a different person and then come back to ourselves. We can use this part of our of self to travel spiritually in sort of like a trance state or, or, or what some people would call an out-of-body experience, astral projection, you know, we're getting into that sort of stuff. That is the part of the self that will leave you and then come back. Um, you can astral project in, into very different uh, appearances to 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 reach certain areas uh, on along your spiritual journey. Um, so this is, you know, just one part of the self that it, that exists overall in the complex structure of the soul, the complex structure of the self. And as we examine these parts of self, we're going to see just how complex and how in depth it goes, and how why I don't think even to this day that we can accurately say that when so when when one person dies at least from my view of the world, is that when that person dies, is there's, there are parts of them that stick around. There's parts of them that come that stick with us. 
there's parts of them that uh, go elsewhere to their families and, and other things like that. So it's not just a simple cut and dry part of death onto the next plane or onto the next hall of the gods or onto the, you know, whatever. There, there's very different uh, views of things and there's a lot of complexity uh, with this. You know, so ultimately, I guess what I want to, or, or one way to sort of like seal it over, you know, and, and, and just finalize this video is to say that the Homer is uh, the, the part of you that other people perceive. It's who you are at, at, at a core, right? And through various uh, practices, whether it be through spiritual practices, physical uh, changes, physical practice, you know, uh, just everything about you, your physical self, your spiritual self, the things that people don't see within you, um, you can alter and change that part of you, uh, and then people will perceive you differently, you know, so you want to be careful um, about that because um, how we are perceived uh, goes into other things as far as like the, the worldview of our, of our ancestors is perception was a very important thing, right? And how you were perceived and how you were viewed and how you were looked at uh, in society was, was something that, you know, you didn't want to have that part tarnished or, or, or damaged in any way. Your reputation was uh, something that was to be uh, cherished and, and upheld and, and kept in a good standing, right? So I think that when it comes to what we do to change the perception that others have of us um, should be done carefully. You know, what benefit does that have to you and your tribe and your immediate folk and kindred um, by changing that appearance? Is, are there things that, you know, uh, there, there's uh, parts of you that need to change, parts of you that need to be, you know, the, the Hummer needs to be shifted about? Um, this is just my own constant, I, you know, the wheels are constantly turning in my head when it comes to, to this sort of thing, and I'm sure that as time goes on and as I continue to learn, some of this stuff is going to evolve and change in some way. That Homer is going to shift. Uh, that, that part of me is going to shift. So I'm sure for everybody that's watched my videos up to this point over the last nearly two years, um, you have seen a shift. You have seen a change in my Homer. Um, and so it happens. I think it happens in a way that is good because we're, we're learning, we're, we're evolving. Our, the inner part of ourself um, is constantly exposed to different things that's going to you know, benefit us. Um, so that's it guys, that's today's video about Homer. Um, the next few videos are going to be about more parts of the self. We've got to talk about uh, uh, Huger, we have to talk about the Hamingia, the Filia, you know, all this stuff. So it's going to be a really fun series I think and I'm looking forward to continuing talking with you guys about this, um, hearing all of your feedback down in the comments section. So as always, please, um, once you finish watching this video, just head down into the comments section and let me know what you think. Let me know what your idea and, and, and how long you've been considering this, uh, you know, this soul complex, this, this parts of ourself that exist uh, for us as, as modern heathens. And, you know, if this is something that you're getting into thinking of more when it comes to what happens when we die, the afterlife, where parts of ourself go and how, if you think, if you're thinking along these lines um, with how complex the soul is, or how complex parts of ourselves and examining it more, um, how you can kind of see why there's no real one final resting place for uh, the deceased, for the dead, because there's so many places that, that things can go and, and where they can end up. So anyways, guys and gals, that's today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check the description area down below for all the ways that you can support this channel. Uh, by becoming a Patreon supporter through uh, Patreon. Um, any donations that you want to send via PayPal or buy me a coffee, all the links are in the link tree down there. There's also merchandise that you guys can purchase through Teespring and Redbubble. Get you some really nice threads to support the channel. Um, and as always, I have rune sets. I make rune sets out of uh, birch and uh, driftwood. Um, you can email me down below uh, through uh, Gmail, MidgardMusingsTN at gmail.com for a quote on that. And uh, don't forget to check out all the, the stuff down in the description area for ways that you can support. Alright guys, so thank you so much again for watching today's video. Really looking forward to continuing this series and learning more about ourselves uh, over the next several weeks. So, hail, thank you all, and I'll see you in the next video.